welcome back. This is part two of uh, exporting skeletal animation and skeletons from Blender to CryEngine 3. Um, as you can see here, our skeleton is, our scene has had a few more objects added to it. Um, I've just added some handles with some inverse kinematic, uh, with some IK on it, uh, so we can make doing some basic animation a little bit easier. Um, let me see here. Oh, yep. One of the things that I've done, uh, we've got a character params file here, uh, CHR params, um, which the first part needs to be the name of your model. And uh, give you a basic rundown here. Once again, read the docs. This is all in the documentation for CryEngine 3. Uh, for the software development kit for uh, modding for Crisis 2. Um, with the CHR params, you don't need to put a file path, uh, the animation file path. All you've got to do is just put the name there, and uh, if you put the CAF file into the animations folder under game, it'll find it. Uh, I went ahead and set this up so. Uh, all I have to do is just copy it over, hit do a refresh, and it'll work. Anyway, back to our guy here. Um, I've already saved him out as rigify scale underscore animation, and this is why. Okay, when we uh, do our handles, okay, when we go to set keyframes for our initial animation, we're going to set keyframes for the handles not the uh, not the skeleton we're going to do it for the handles so uh, what I'm going to do I'm not sure if I got to do it one by one I don't know this is going to be a first with trying five at one but I'll go ahead and uh, let's see here G Z point five yep it's set it awesome GZ negative 0.5. All right, that sets our first keyframe here. We'll go on down here to 20, and we're gonna give that a GZ 0.5. Give him a little bit of an exaggerated jump there. We'll go to 40. GZ negative 0.5. Put him right back in there. Now, here's another thing. Um, with the anim node, it, this really isn't important, but I do it anyway just for thoroughness. Uh, you set your end frame to whatever your last keyframe is, and uh, as you can see here, we got a, a slight little jump animation going on here. All that's working. That's awesome. That's great. Now, how do we transfer this animation to each one of our little little guys here? Because uh, as I said, if you pay attention, as it's moving around, our location for our transforms, it's not doing anything. That's all right. I figured out how to get it. Well, you come over here to the CryBlend menu and we go to the second in the list of uh, animation ad additions that I've given us and we click on the part here that says make fake bone keyframes list we do that it'll play through the animation one time and uh, it'll capture a location and rotation for every frame there now we don't want to put a keyframe for every frame because that ends up, uh, yeah, no, we don't want to do that. The exporter don't like it. The resource compiler don't like it. It looks like crud in the uh, engine. So after we've done that, we go ahead and we go back here to our first frame, go to CryBlend menu, add a fake bone keyframe. And this will go through and 
when you click it it's going to take it a second we've got a bunch of bones here don't worry it's not locked up it's just is going through each bone one by one it's comparing it to the list we just made and it's going to add a keyframe for every one of these bones here at that location for the rotation and uh, location in there um, I don't have access to the progress bar would have been awesome but uh, it, I just don't have it so you just have to bear with it be patient remember the more bones you have in there the longer it's going to take um, while we're waiting on this I'm going to uh, go ahead and I'm going to pause this for a moment the recording and I'll add in the keyframes at 20 and 40 so you don't have to set through this alright we're back now one of the things that I was uh, explaining earlier now that we've added keyframes and the reason for needing more than one file you know something for the bind pose and so on and so forth is as you can see our little fake bones here are completely out of whack now if we try to export this and use that as the skeleton it would no would not be good would not be good at all um, one of the uh, things you've got to got to do now that we've gone this far don't be afraid or don't try to fix the fake bones they are where they need to be uh, according to these guys they are in exactly the same location they're they're in the proper location because this guy here his zero 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 space which would be the center of the world is all the way up here so he he is in exactly the same spot that he needs to be in alright now another thing uh, you are going to need to add an anim node and add it to the group alright choose your frame range and the name you want to name it um, that's not not difficult uh, the reason for that is if you don't you're going to end up with a billion little character animation files uh, each one of them being about you know two kilobytes in length and you're gonna be looking at it going oh my god and you'll have to delete it and start all over now when you go to export once again uh, take your helper objects or your handles and just hide them out of the way alright because the exporter does not look past this layer and it does not look for hidden objects uh, unless it's a uh, little uh, helper bone. Go ahead and select everything and like I said every every bone's got a keyframe added to it every last one of them and it does take a little bit you know when you get the more you got to export the longer it's going to take. Um, I'm going to try and streamline it you know and get it to go a little bit quicker but for now to get it to you guys and let you uh, use it that's the way it is alright you go from here and uh, you just go ahead and click on export and I'm going to show you the reason why you need to set up a bone on the ground name it biped one or whatever you want to name it but the root bone uh, when you go in here, if you do use the Rigify, if you don't make your own, you are going to have to uh, put a bone that everything else is parented to on the ground here. And it's got to do with the animation. Um, so, once again, you just uh, make sure everything's selected, all your fake bones are orange, everything else is green, your anim node is green because it's part of the... Uh, the uh, cry export just like the cry plot for the uh, XSI and once you do that you uh, 
go ahead and move your animation over to the animations file. You'll find it. It'll uh, I changed the name to Jump Anim, and uh, you just move it on over, and then. Yeah, here is why you are going to this is going to explain why you need the uh, bind pose because you see all these guys you see where they are now when we go to load this up and like I said I already got that set up now uh, we'll go ahead and reload the geometry Making me out to be a liar. Uh, well, that's probably not completely true because when I did it with a mesh, just take my word on it. Alright, now the reason for needing a bone right there on the 000 that everything else is parented to, if you just do it like this, when you play your animation, you see how he's all the way up here and the hip bone, which is what this is weighted to is right there that should be on the uh, the ground there but as you can see our animation is playing like it should I mean we're we're doing uh, We've got our little jump animation there, and uh, don't forget you need to add the biped bone down there at the bottom. Uh, just follow the documentation for their, you know, their recommendations for doing this. Uh, this is just to show you how to get the animation out, not how to rig it up. You know, that's what the documentation is for. Uh, now I know that not all of it applies, but you just you need to look at it for the 3ds max for Maya and the XSI if one don't work another will um, I think that's it on this part of it uh, I'm sure there's gonna be a part three I'll look into that um, but yeah if, if you see the little fake bones here how wacky and wild they've gotten it's okay that that's fine don't try to fix them because over here as you can see everything is fine with the exception of the hip bone there which it is placed at zero 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 so you need to set up a, a root bone right there on zero 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 and then parent everything else to it uh, look on google the rigging you know learn how to use blender learn how to rig in blender um, new at a lot of this also so this is not a problem it is not a mistake it's not an exporter issue it is the fact that I don't have a bone on the ground if I had a bone on the ground and all this was parented to it then this guy would be down here on the ground you need it for the locator so anyway uh, I'm going to play with this a little more see if there's anything else that I've missed and uh, if there is there'll be a part three if there's not uh, I'll check Crydev every now and again and I'll help when I can but uh, I need to try and I don't know how I'm going to uh, optimize this because I'm making a list of every frame in there every movement every rotation of the bone and then we're going through that list for each bone and fake bone uh, there, there's a lot that this thing does um, just bear in mind the more complicated it is the longer it's going to take don't let it scare you blender's not locked up it's just working um, it, at the very least I'll put 
something in there uh, have it printing out something in the console so you can actually see that it's going uh, but other than that you know, but now. <laughs> Alright, that's it.